All right, I hope people I don't think this is a bomb. <laughs> don't say bomb. I got my lovely assistant here who's going to lend me her hands because I have to fly the drone and film. Say hi, Jen. Hi. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, so the way this is going to work is on the map, I have a circle, that circle, and that's the next waypoint. The dot is our current location. So the goal is to put the dot in the circle. And the course 2 is the course from us to that dot. Course is the course that we're currently on. So let's start walking and we're going to put that uh, dot in the circle. Just a quick uh, intermission here before we start walking this little course. I just wanted to show a little preview of the map. Uh, this is where we're going to be starting. We're going to walk this length here to this waypoint and to this waypoint and to this waypoint. I'm going to show you how to build this later in the video, so stick around. But uh, just wanted to show this so you had a little bit of context of what we're doing here. So let's get uh, let's get back to the video. Okay. We are walking. Sorry if this is a bit shaky, but you can see if I just stop, our current position is moving towards the circle. So let's keep walking. The reason that it's flashing like this is that the display is made of LEDs and the frequency of the LEDs are screwing with the frame rate of the video, or I should say the shutter speed. But hey, look, we are currently on course to intercept the first waypoint. And as you can see, course and course two are even. And that's what you want. You want to match the course to the course two. Distance here is coming down. As we get closer, I should have built some kind of rig to hold the camera on the screen. But see, we're getting we're 28 meters away. Boom, we are at our waypoint. Try to get this to stop blinking. All right, we're six meters past it, so let's move to the next one. Now it's eight meters in front of us. Let's move towards it. Four meters, two meters. We are inside our dot, or a circle. Okay, let's move to the next one. 35 meters away, okay. Let's move. 15 meters. Well, this thing actually works. I can't believe it. All right. I have arrived at my destination. Boom. Let's take a look at how I wired up this contraption and hop in the software. So taking a look at the hardware here, it's pretty simple. I just got the uh, GPS module, we got an OLED display, micro SD card reader, I got four buttons, and a buzzer. Uh, for this part of the video, we're only using this module and this module, one button and the buzzer. In the next part of the series, we'll uh, dive into using the micro SD card to do some data logging, as well as load the uh, coordinates for the waypoints. But I'm just using a battery bank here to power the Arduino Mega. If you're not familiar with these GPS modules, they just run on serial. So I have it going to serial one, hardware serial, right down there. On the Arduino Mega, the Arduino Mega has a bunch of hardware serial ports. And the uh, display runs on the I squared C protocol. So that's just right next to it, down there. So TX1, RX1, SDA, SCL. The reason I'm using the Arduino Mega is because you kind of need the memory in order to run the display, GPS, micro SD card. Uh, you run out of memory when you use an Arduino Uno, at least the uh, R3. I think an R4 would work. I might try that in a future episode. I'll have all the uh, details for the circuit diagrams as well as the code all on GitHub. But uh, yeah, let's look at that. Uh, let's look at the code now. This is kind of an inter intermediate video where you do need some Python skills and some Arduino skills 
but it's all pretty basic. I mean, if you can uh, install libraries and things like that, I mean, you can just copy and paste this code if you don't understand it, and it'll all work just fine. Uh, but honestly, it's not that hard to learn uh, how to code in Python. And well, Arduino, yeah, C++, so it's a different story. But if you just copy and paste it, I guarantee it'll work. So give it a shot and uh, let's get into it. Okay, in the Arduino IDE now, let's run through this code real quick. Uh, so you have just import all your libraries here. I like easy button, easy buzzer. Makes adding buttons and buzzers so easy. But uh, next steps is just start setting up your GPS and your uh, display. Here I have the uh, serial one on the Arduino Mega um, defined as SS because I originally started uh, making this on the Arduino Uno, which uses software serial. And then I was too lazy to go in and change all the SSs to serial ones. So I just did this. As we work our way down here, I hard coded all of the coordinates um, in uh, the later episode. Probably the third part of this series, I'm going to show you how to do this using the SD card. And uh, on the SD card, we're just going to read in data and uh, do the coordinates that way. So we don't have to hard code it into the Arduino code here. Uh, next up, we have some, these are some variables that I used in order to find the dimensions um, that we're going to be using when we, when it comes time to map this onto the display. Uh, these are just, um, maximum and minimum numbers you know on on planet earth for latitude longitude <laughs> but anyway what we're doing later on is just finding the highest and lowest of uh for, for the latitude and the longitude you'll see what i mean uh these two variables are for aspect ratio and uh that's for like for maps that are like long and horizontally we need one aspect ratio and and if they're longer vertically you need the other aspect ratio otherwise it just stretches it into that 64 by 64 pixel part of the display that i used because uh, i used a 128 by 64 oled display and we're only using 64 by 64 of it half of it to actually display the map uh down below we have a current latitude current longitude pretty self-explanatory I, I instantiate those using the um the array up here with the first uh, coordinate and then later on, uh, when the GPS starts running, it'll replace these with the current location. Course, course to distance between, um, those are also variables that were on the display, as you saw earlier. Waypoint, uh, use this to um, jump to uh, different indexes in this uh, array here. And um, I used that, uh, you saw me pushing the button earlier when we were in the field and it was jumping, the circle was moving further down the uh, waypoints. That's what that's for. Uh, then in our setup here, I just, I got the serial running just to, for debugging. Uh, this is our serial one. This is how we're reading in our GPS data. This is just button stuff with the easy button. Min max lat long, that is this function here down on the bottom. This was the one that sets the um, minimum and maximum latitude and longitudes, which set the dimensions for the mapping. When we uh, map those values uh, from a latitude and longitude down to a 64 by 64 grid, as you'll see here in a sec. And then I just have this logic right here, which sets the aspect ratio. Like if it's uh, a wide one or a long one, it decides which way to manage stretching. So just no stretching. Okay, let's go back up and now. Then I start my display. Uh, this, actually, I don't even need this anymore. The only reason I have this here is because I just wanted to make sure the display was working. Um, down here, we start our loops for the button and the buzzer. Here, we handle the button press. This is the logic here that navigates through the uh, waypoints. So it goes all the way up to the end of the um, array and then resets back to zero. Here is our GPS code. Uh, when the GPS is available, we run this function, which uh, just gets all the data, sets the current lat, the current long, distance between, and course to. Okay, directly under that. Now we start to draw the map. And uh, this was the part that I had the hardest time with. Uh, I usually use these displays just to like display text. I've never actually used it to draw anything. So trying to figure all this out was kind of a pain in the butt. But basically, the reason this looks so crazy, I got this longify function here. 
is because you cannot map floats, which I learned the hard way, um, using this uh, map function that's built into the the Arduino code here. It's one of the built-in libraries. Um, so what I had to do was multiply all of the floats by one million right here. And that takes these numbers here and moves the decimal point all the way over here. So they're no longer floats. And then we can now map, they're, they're now longs. We can now map the longs down to the 64 by 64 pixel little map that we have on our tiny 1.3 inch OLED display. Um, so that's how I did that. So this just iterates over all of the waypoints and it draws a line from one waypoint to the next waypoint, then moves forward and draws a line from that waypoint to the next waypoint, moves forward and just does that until it has no more waypoints to draw lines to. So the next line here is the fill circle and this is for your, our current position. That was like the dot we were trying to put in the circle when we were out in the field. Uh, this is the circle right here and that's uh, the position of the next waypoint. And this is the one that we can uh, scroll through with the button. And by moving the, by clicking the button, we move forward in the uh, array to the next waypoint. And this is just some display for the text. So we had the course, course two distance and our current position right here. Um, the way the course works on these uh, GPS is it doesn't have a compass. So it actually just uses like the previous location and then the current location, and then it determines what direction that was. And it kind of gives you an idea of what direction you're going. It's like an inferred direction. But uh, as you saw, um, when we were in the field, you know, we just matched this number to course two, and then you know you're going in the correct direction. Uh, this down here is just our logic to get the data off of the GPS. And that's pretty much it for that. So let's hop into the Python script where we generate this code from the GPX file. All right, here we are looking at that Python script. Basically, what I'm doing is opening a GPX file, which looks like this. GPX files are uh, like files that you can create to put on a, like a GPS device, like a Garmin E-Trex or your watch, like a Garmin watch or anything that gives you any type of navigation. Um, I'll show you how I created this one here right after we look at this Python script. But uh, all this does is it opens that file. I just have it in the same folder right here. And I use GPXPy, which is a great little tool. I actually was trying to do this manually before I learned about GPXPy. And this does everything uh, for you. It just creates an object uh, using the GPXPy. And uh, then you can go through that object data and just extract all the data out of it. So here I'm just extracting the waypoints right here. These two lines, this is going to be used for our later video where I uh, generate the uh, JSON right here. Uh, but for this video, um, we're only going to be using uh, this bit here, the final output where it outputs a string, copy and paste it. So um, let me run this real fast. I forget. Let's see. Okay. Yep. Do I have my environment running? Yep, it is running. Okay. And there you go. That's all it does. And as you can see over here, it, it generated this uh, file here. Let me uh, word wrap that. So uh, in part three, we'll look at how we bring this into the Arduino sketch and open it dynamically. But anyway, so when we run that script here, uh, it basically gives us the amount of waypoints. So we're going to copy, basically just copy that. And we're just going to copy this whole thing. So here, let me copy this. Copy. Uh, let me hop over to Arduino. So let's just pretend there was nothing here. Just copy that. Come in here. Paste it. Boom. If you want it to look all pretty, just go back right there. Uh, jump here. Do that. Do that. Do that. You don't have to do this. This just makes it look prettier. And uh, change this to whatever this number is right here. 
You saw all this on the screen earlier, but here I just ran it just to demonstrate it. But yeah, you change this, copy and paste those uh, lat longs, um, upload it to your Arduino, and then go outside and walk the course. <laughs> Get outside, you lazy ass. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, let me show you how I created, um, let me hop back into VS Code. So let me show you how I created this real quick, and um, that's the end of the video. So here we are in the uh, SAR Topo. This is actually free if you just want to create something real fast and um, you're not trying to uh, save anything. If you need, if you wanted to save something and work on it later, then you actually have to pay for it. But uh, the way I make this is I just go here to add, add a marker. You take that marker, drag it here. Uh, I was parked like right over here. This is a uh, Lone Mountain here in Las Vegas. And as I just did a quick little trail right here with my friend Jen. And it came back. So anyway, you choose. Uh, we'll go back here. Put another. Oops, sorry. I forgot. Look, my face is blocking this. Let me move myself up here. <laughs> okay, I have to click OK. Then you can add. So it's a quick key, Shift M. There we go. So you can add another waypoint. Click OK. Shift M. Another waypoint. Click OK. And then you just keep doing this until you have a decent amount of waypoints that will help you navigate. We'll do one more. Take us to the end. Take us home. Okay, so now that you did that, all you have to do is go to export. Here's all those GPS points we just did. But uh, choose GPX. Yep, that's what we want to do. We're not. We don't have any lines here. We're literally just exporting uh, waypoints. So we hit export. All right, I'm just gonna save this one to my programming folder here. I'm going to just name it export.gpx and then uh, we'll just hop back into VS Code and let me move myself again. So here's that uh, GPX file. Let me word wrap this. There it is. All right, let's uh, let's clear it. Uh, let's just run. Uh, well, we have to update actually. Change this file name to export.gpx, save that, and we'll just run Python gpx to ardu, boom. Well, would you look at that? It's another 11 exactly. And now you can see that it is actually 11 if we just select waypoint, watch, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We can count. As you can see in the script here, I cut off uh, at the sixth decimal point just because the floats in the uh, in Arduino uh, that's the highest resolution that they go to. So yeah, that's how you use all this code that I put together. Um, if you build this, uh, leave it down in the comments. I think it'd be pretty cool to see uh, what some of you guys come up with. Also, if you're good at um, GPS's and with Arduino and I was able to inspire you to build something cool. I'd like to know too. Let me know in the comments uh, Until next time the next one we are going to incorporate uh, data logging Which is what everyone usually does, but we're going to try to create like different data screens and um, We'll have uh, one for recording data and then we'll have one where we also have the mapping feature so while we're able while we're navigating with the with the waypoints It'll also be recording as we go, recording a track. So uh, make sure you subscribe, and um, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.